Guys, this one is the best water cooler in the market, not only for value for money, but also for absolute performance and noise levels. This thing is absolutely crazy. So here we are with my review of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro RGB white. Now this is going to be a pretty different review from other channels because I'm not going to do a very long graph against other water coolers, but I'm going to compare it directly to the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. And I'm going to be using an i9-14900K. Now while a lot of you may not like this CPU, you cannot deny that it's a great CPU for thermal testing because it runs so hot. This is also going to allow us to use the integrated plate to flatten out the CPU, included with the Arctic liquid freezer cooler. You don't need a contact frame if you're buying this thing. First of all, the price. This thing comes in at right around the 130 bucks mark, depending on discounts and other promotions. It is very good because it prices itself just a little bit over the entry level and very far from the expensive LCD all-in-ones at the top. Now, right off the bat, opening up the packaging, you can see that it's basically already built. The fans are pre-mounted, so it's gonna take two minutes to mount it on top as an exhaust, which is where you should put it on once, basically all the time if you can. And if you're building it on an Intel socket, you will have to remove the socket, put on the plate, screw it down, and then it's just two screws to put in the actual pump. And you can use the MX6 thermal paste included. It's actually the paste I recommend and I use in 90% of my builds. So, you know, it's a very good paste and your build is gonna be done. The cables are all daisy chained and basically you can decide if you want an output with three different outs, one for the integrated fan on the VRMs, because yes, this is also another plus of this cooler, one for the fans and one for the pump, or if you want a single one. I usually go with a single one because I find the stock curve is very good and then you're ready to go. Now, the only difference with the pro version versus the non-pro version, which I've used a lot on the channel already, is it's a little bit more expensive, but it features these brand new fans. Now these, other than a new design, they maintain the older RGB, at least to my eyes, it looks the same, but they are a lot, a lot better. Now, if you're into the nerdy part of fans as much as I am, I recommend you go and take a look at the Arctic page about the new fans. These things are insane. You can feel it when you get them. They have more blades. They're just so much better than the previous one. And the previous ones were really good arctic p12s argb now as i was saying this cooler comes with an integrated fan on top of the pump now the fan is actually going to be on this portion of the cover of the pump which you can detach and reattach as you can see and they also slightly improved the design on this one by putting a little silver lining in the middle now the extra fan is going to make a big difference for the temperature of vram and of the actual socket. If you have a good motherboard, you're gonna have temperature for that. So with that said, I'm now gonna show you the before results. So when I was using the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, still with the same thermal paste MX6, freshly applied and still as exhaust. With the same CPU, set the same. Now to avoid spikes in how the CPU behaved, the CPU is slightly undervolted and set at stock with no overclock whatsoever, just an undervolt to reduce the throttling because as you can see, the CPU was heavily throttling with the older only one. These i9s are so hard to cool and that's the reason why a lot of them were breaking because if not cooled properly, they're gonna last less. Now, as you can see, we were reaching 100 degrees just by running a CPU-Z stress test. And in the CPU-Z benchmark, we were slightly thermally bottlenecked with power limits unlocked. If we go ahead and run Prime 95, not only is the CPU dramatically overheating, but we can also see that the socket is running pretty high at 70 degrees and the VRMs themselves are under quite the heavy load. Now I will show you the results with the new cooler and the results are genuinely insane. So we topped out at 88 degrees under full load. So if we run the same CPU-Z benchmark and we let it run for a while, we actually saw 90 for a fraction of a second, but that's only before the fans actually ramp up and the fans at full load are not noisy at all. Now, I do not have the professional equipment to show you the decibel readings, but what I can tell you via my ear is that they are less noisy than the previous fans and they are the quietest only one at 100% speed I have tested. And if you follow the channel, you know I try basically every piece of hardware on the market because I build computers for a living. Being a YouTuber is not my job yet. I hope it will be one day. Dramatic temperature reduction, even on the stress test of CPU-Z. And if we run a benchmark, we actually get a little bit of extra performance because we are now not throttling anymore. So the performance delta is actually more than 12 degrees because 12 degrees is just from the 
peak in prime 95 of 100 to now as you can see at 88 however the thing is it was throttling at 100 so it probably would have gone around 102 103 so we dropped around 15 degrees by maintaining the same size of volume one by simply getting this thing which is insane it's as much as you get more than you get from a delete actually and we also dropped 10 degrees on the socket and our vrms were cooler thanks to the fan right there so this all in one is pretty cheap it's not on the cheap end of price but it is on the lower to mid range of price with top of the line performance i do not have an all in one on hands which beats this one i don't have it this one is the best unless you go for a custom loop it looks good in my opinion you may not like it the tubes are pretty long they're also pretty stiff which you may not like it but i like how you can adjust them at the front and angle them however you want it is very easy to connect no proprietary garbage all open-end 4-pin and 3-pin connectors and it takes 5 minutes to install. I don't see why you should buy any other only one if not for aesthetics. This is the best you can get. With that said, this is my honest opinion. Let me know down below what you guys think. If you have one of these or if you had a bad experience with one, let me know why. So we can also help other people read the comments and see if it is actually as good as I say or if I'm actually wrong, which it happens. Also, if you watched the video this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe. See you guys in another video. Bye-bye.